guys, I'm so glad you're joining us today. I'm Taylor. And I'm Callie, and I am so ready to make a splash today. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let's get this party started by worshiping God with our singing and our dancing. Whether you're clapping your hands to the beat or singing at the top of your lungs, take some time as you're worshiping God to think about the words that you're singing. Take some time to thank Him for all He's done for us by giving Him all of our love and praise. Let's do this. I lived hard on the wire, hand in the fire for so long. But you show me better, a new kind of love. It's ever the one I want. I'm lifting you higher, higher. There's nothing. Before the kind of life that I cannot find on my own, I see the world, but I have never been so sure that I want your heart. God, I just want to be where you are. There are a couple of ways that we worship or show God love and praise. We worship God through singing, but we also worship God with our giving. The Bible teaches us that we give first, save second, and live on the rest. That's right. God has been so generous to us that we can be generous with everything we have. The money that you give during offering is used to help people near and far meet, know, and follow Jesus. We have lots of ways for you to get involved in offering. You and your parents can learn more at give.sv.cc. Now, let's sing out this last song with all we've got. Safe in the Savior's hands. Yeah. 
Watching love be the shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You sent your sun down and set me free Everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come Wow, you guys really made a splash. We're going to have so much fun this summer as we find out how we can make waves. You can make waves by splashing in a pool. Cut it, Whoa, that's so fun, I'm not gonna lie. But you can make waves in this world with the help of God's spirit. You see, what you do today can change the world around you. Raise your hand if you think this world needs more love, joy, more peace, and more patience. Me too. Those are the kinds of things that will show up in our lives when we put our faith in Jesus. God's Spirit helps us show those things. That's how we can make waves and make a difference for others. Our Bible story today is going to tell us about how we can make waves by having patience. So let's check it out now. Everybody, I'm Haley and I've got something to show you. It's called a ripple tank and it will help us see waves in motion and it will help us learn how we can make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. I always thought you needed something like an ocean to make a wave, but that's not the case. A wave can start with something small like Love. When you show love to someone, it starts a wave of love that spreads out to more and more people. It's what you might call the ripple effect. You might not have seen the ripples in that shot, so let's see it again in slow motion. See how the ripples got bigger and bigger? That's what happens when you show love. And that's not the only wave you can make in the world. You can make waves of Peace, waves of joy, Woo. waves of patience. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Oh, come on. I am so sorry. Lost my temper a little there. Well, maybe more than a little. <laughs> Guess I didn't make a wave of patience, huh? The good news is our story today is all about patience. It looks like I need some patience today. And I'm uh, gonna need a mop, too.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 18. King Solomon, one of the wisest men to ever live, collected many wise sayings in the book of Proverbs. Chapter 15, verse 8 tells us, A person with a bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. Let's see how this truth might play out in our lives today. Izzy stared at her mom in disbelief. But theater camp is the best week all summer. I feel totally fine. Dad tested positive. He's okay, but he's got to quarantine, and I think the rest of us better stay home this week, too. This is so not fair. Just like that, Izzy went from a whole week of fun with her friends at theater camp to watching her younger brothers at home while her mom worked. Can't they just go over to Aunt Rena's? That was the plan, but we don't want anyone else to get sick. We're not sick. It's just a week, sweetie. We'll do something fun later in the summer to make up for it. <sighs> The next morning, Mom rushed through the kitchen. Um, I've got to be on a Zoom call in five minutes. Jack, Ben, you listen to Izzy, okay? She's only two years older than me. She's in charge. I'm going to play mind build. Uh, no screens until after lunch. Get outside this morning. Outside? Or read. Do something creative. It was supposed to be practicing Hamilton songs. Mom headed upstairs, leaving Izzy with her brothers. OK, guys. Pick something for breakfast. French toast. Great. Get the eggs, Jack. Get the eggs, Jack. Jack! I'll get them. Bread, vanilla. Don't you need a recipe or something? It's in my head. I'm not eating something you just made up in your head. I'm not. Everyone loves my... Izzy turned to see Ben reaching up for eggs on the top fridge shelf. Careful! <gasps> Izzy stared in horror. Fifteen eggs had exploded all over the kitchen floor. Izzy exploded, too. Ben, you're such a klutz. I'm sorry. Don't yell at him. Yeah, well, if you'd gotten the eggs like I said, he wouldn't have dropped them. I'm eating cereal. <sighs> Izzy grabbed a roll of paper towels and shoved them at Jack. Not till after you clean up those eggs. No fair. Yeah, well, life's not fair. <sighs> Izzy slammed the fridge door shut which made two cereal boxes on the top of the fridge tip over and land in the egg mess. You can clean up your own mess. Jack stalked out, slamming the kitchen door behind him. I'm hungry. Izzy grabbed an egg-covered box of cereal out of the mess. Here. Need milk. I can't get the milk till I clean up your stupid mess. I said I was sorry. You're being mean. Ben sulked his way out the other side of the kitchen. Sighing, Izzy tore a handful of paper towels out and started to clean up the egg mess. Mom peered inside the door, earbuds in. I'm on mute. What is going on? I... Jack was being a pain and Ben dropped the eggs and... I just lost it. Mom sighed. She typed a quick message on her screen, took out her earbuds and set down her computer. Then she grabbed some wet wipes and started to clean alongside Izzy. I know this whole week isn't fair. I know your brothers can be annoying, but I really need you to take a deep breath when you want to snap. Why does everybody think deep breathing will fix the world? It doesn't, but it does give you a chance to think, to ask God for help and remember what's true. Mom gingerly tapped on her screen with an, an uneggy finger. Read this for me, okay? Izzy bent over the screen trying not to drip egg. A person with bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. Proverbs 15, 18. I bet King Solomon or whoever wrote that down didn't have younger brothers. Trust me, Solomon's family was not perfect either. I'm sorry, Mom. Hey, I feel like snapping too. But right now, I have to jump back on this call. Think you can calm things down with your brothers? Yeah. I guess. Izzy finished mopping up the egg mess, 
Then she checked the pantry and then went upstairs to the boys' room where Jack was sketching furiously and Ben glowered from his bunk, clutching his stuffed lion. Guys, I shouldn't have yelled. I'm sorry, but I did find this new box of sugar bombs way in the back of the pantry. Oh, yeah! Mom only lets us have those for snack. It's a special week, and I'll make sure we have eggs to do French toast tomorrow. So the three siblings marched back down to the kitchen for giant bowls of sugar bombs, yay! Ben managed to splash his milk all over the table. Oops. Ben! Izzy could see both Ben and Jack brace themselves. She took a deep breath. It's fine. I'll help you clean up. And after breakfast, we can get out the slip and slide. Yes! You're going in the mud. Nope, it wasn't the way Izzy thought she would be spending her week, but if she could keep her temper, maybe she would have fun after all. One of the Proverbs of Solomon is this, a person with a bad temper stirs up conflict, but a person who is patient calms things down. So what kind of things make you impatient? Do you get angry at other people when they don't act the way you think they should? Or when they get in your space or mess with your stuff? Do you get angry when things happen beyond your control, like accidents or sicknesses or bad weather? Maybe you get angry at yourself when you mess up. There are a lot of things that can make us impatient. We wanna make waves, right? Start a ripple effect. But when you're not patient, you can make a wave too, more like a tsunami. Yeah. Patience is one of the hardest virtues to get good at. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. So when you feel like you're about to lose it, you can try taking deep breaths, or you can count to 10 or 20 or however long it takes, or you can talk to God. When you put your trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit can help you show patience. When you learn patience, you can go from someone who makes a mess to someone who calms things down. The one thing to remember today is this, be patient with each other. Everyone you see has their own struggles with impatience, so help each other out. And when you do mess up and lose your patience, take the time to make things right. I'll see you next time. It was pretty clear in those examples that a little bit of patience can make a huge difference. Like Solomon said, if we lose our temper, we can make a tough situation even worse. But if we choose to act with patience, we can calm things down. We might even be able to stop an argument from even happening in the first place. And remember, we don't have to do this on our own. When we put our faith in Jesus, we have the help of God's Holy Spirit. God's Spirit can help us be patient with each other. I know that I'd want other people to be patient with me. So it's really important that we learn to treat others the way we want to be treated. Our memory verse this month is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It helps us understand what God's Spirit can do in our lives. It says this, the fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. So the next time you feel yourself getting angry because things aren't going your way, or someone made a huge mess in your space, or you have to wait your turn, stop and ask God for help. Choose to be patient. Choose to calm things down. Before we head out, let's take some time to talk to God. Dear God, thank you so much for today. God, I pray that when things are hard or we have to wait for something or something happens that we don't know about, Please help us to have patience, God. We love you. Thank you for loving us, and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at svkids, 
and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sun Valley Kids. We are so excited to make waves with you this summer at Summer Jam at all of our locations from June 27th through the 30th. For more information and sign up, you can go to summer.sv.cc. We can't wait to see you there. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.